We are glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. It is an exciting day to gather and be in worship together. And as we continue in our series of the great I Am statements, knowing who Jesus is helps us to know who we are in him. As we gather this morning, I want to point out just a few announcements that we have for the upcoming week. First, I'm going to begin with Jason and our youth events for this evening. Do you want to talk to him? All right, so normally we have youth planned tonight from uh, about 5 to 7, with 5 o'clock being the junior high showing up and 5.40 being the high school. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, I actually don't live in Woodville. Uh, I live in Jasper, and our house just now got power as of this morning. Um, so all of our stuff is currently still in Tyler. Um, so I'm going to have to go back there after service today. Can you hear me okay? Okay, short story, I don't live in Woodville. I live in Jasper. Just got power. Uh, my family and I, we, uh, we pulled back up to Tyler uh, during the hurricane, so all of our stuff is there currently. Um, so this evening we will not have youth, because uh, I'm going to be going back there, uh, hopefully getting all of our stuff back to the house. Fingers crossed. So. All right, so we're postponing you this week. Next week is Labor Day, so that's the weekend for you to spend the uh, weekend with your family. On September 9th, that is the goal date for handbells to resume, for choir to resume, and confirmation will begin that day. So any fifth and sixth graders or upper junior high and high school students who have not been confirmed, who are interested in that, I encourage you to contact myself and we will have a conversation about that. That will go from September 9th all the way through next May. It's an opportunity for children and youth to claim God. At baptism, it's a visual and outward sign of God claiming us. When you go through confirmation, it's an opportunity for you to claim Christ. So throughout that journey, we're going to need some mentors. Uh, that's an opportunity for someone to partner with them and walk with them. Molly Kate, that's a big, that's a big part of confirmation, right? To have those extra people, you can ask those tough questions. If you have a really big theological question, go to someone like Fred. Uh, he or church history, and he'll be able to fill you in on all of that. If you have a question about scripture or something else, uh, Jim Boone or Mr. Alton, there's so many different people, Patsy and Dixie, who can teach you about prayer. All of us come together in this journey of faith. And so those mentors walk with our young people. Also, we want to point out, uh, we're still holding off on men's breakfast. We hope we hope uh, that we can begin that in September. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how things are going. Same with Ladies Day Out. We hope that we can do that very soon. I know y'all miss that fellowship. So, also many of you are aware of some of the events that happened this last week. We were um, spared in that storm, but there are many, many people east of us who were not. Some of you have asked, how can we help? Right now, it's kind of a wait and see. There are people who need help cleaning up. I've talked to a few of them that live just north of Lake Charles uh, and a few that live in Moss Bluff. Right now, they're just overwhelmed. Their stuff is scattered everywhere. And if you're able to help do that kind of work, let me know and we can create a team to help do that. In the meantime, they kind of have to take a survey of where they are to see what the next things are. So in the meantime, I would ask you to lift up your prayers. You'll see a few donation um, opportunities throughout our community. I encourage you to participate in those as you are able. One of the biggest ways is through UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. They are already there. They are able to uh, have hotel vouchers. They're able to do things that we cannot do from here. And so all of your donations go towards those in need. Throughout the year, we pay what apportionments. Apportionments is kind of a tithe of our church budget. We pay, and it goes to a number of different ministries throughout the United Methodist Church. And one of those is to cover the admin costs and the production costs of UMCOR. So that if you donate this week for those in the hurricane, all of those monies go to those in need. And if you're wanting to do that, you can simply put money in the plate on your way out. Speaking of plates, on, we are not able to pass the offering plate. So as, as you leave today, you will find a plate at each of our exits. As we worship this morning, we come from different places. Most of us come from a place of power. We are glad to have electricity back on. 
and that cool AC. Many of us come from a crazy, unpredictable, chaotic week. And yet wherever we came from, God gathers us in this place. We hear in the scripture today to abide in him, to remain in him, to hold fast in Christ. Worship is one of those ways that we renew ourselves, we renew our spirits, and stay connected with Christ. So this morning I pray that through scripture, through song, through fellowship, even from a distance, we are able to abide in Christ and be reconnected so that we can bear the fruit that he calls us to bear. So this morning, let us worship together. I'm going to invite you. Will you join me in the call to worship as printed up, up here? We are branches rooted to the vine of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, and productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We come because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now to the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May we grow wildly as God tends to us lovingly. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and gracious God, we are so thankful to be here this morning, so joy-filled to be in a building with upright walls, yet we are most aware of those people who did suffer during this storm, Father. But let us know inside a building or outside a building, you are always with us, that we come together to share our faith, to be healed, to grow, Father, spiritually, to grow closer to you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, this morning. Let us not be distracted. May, may we feel your Spirit. May we be filled with your Spirit, Lord, so that we may worship you, we may honor you, and we may praise you this day and every night, every day. In the name of thy Son, Jesus, in his precious name we pray. Amen. prayer this morning, we come in with grateful hearts. Many have said we have been spared by this storm, and out of gratitude, what do you do? You give praise to God, and then you look at the blessings you have, and you look at the opportunities you have to be a blessing. So I encourage you in the days ahead to look around and see, how can I be a blessing out of gratitude? Maybe it's financially, maybe it is through offering a box of diapers or a can of food, Maybe there, it's offering yourself in prayer. Maybe you remember when Rita came through and you were overwhelmed with what you had to do to clean up. Maybe you were overwhelmed and tired of the power being out with an incredible heat index. I encourage you out of a spirit of gratitude to consider how you can give glory to God in the days ahead. Today we continue to focus on those I am statements. In Christ... We can be many things, and even more so when we are together, we can be greater. So I encourage you in the days ahead to think about that. Usually when we have our offering and we have that offertory prayer, we say that God would multiply those gifts for the benefit of his kingdom. We might think we're just offering one thing, but you'll be surprised to see how God can take each of those gifts and multiply them to be a blessing. As we pray together this morning, I encourage you to think about those to the east of us, those throughout our country who are struggling and seeking peace, and those who are overwhelmed for our first responders and our linemen and all the people in between who are the helpers. I've said this many times in the last few months, 
that Mr. Rogers would say, in a time of crisis, look for the helpers, and there you will find hope. So this morning, let us pray. I'll pray, and then I'll pause for you to lift up those in need of God's healing grace and mercy, for those who are experiencing God's joy. And then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you have gathered us in from all walks of life today, that we may abide in you. O oh God, when weeks are chaotic and we come into a place like this, sometimes we realize that we've let go of the vine, that we have become so overwhelmed by the events, the emotions surrounding us, that we have focused on everything but you. And yet you gather us in, you build us up, you overwhelm us with your Holy Spirit through music and through prayer and scripture and the fellowship and the affirmation of being with one another. So God, we have all the reason to gather today to worship you and give you all the praise and glory. Oh God, we truly are grateful. For many of the people gathered have walked through those storms and they know the struggles. And it is with that empathy, O oh God, that we lift up all of those east and north of us who continue to clean up, who continue to ask, now what? How do we move through this? O oh God, may your people be beacons of hope. May we be your hands and feet to help them find that hope and to rebuild their lives. Oh God, when they are too exhausted, surprise them with your peace. When they are too overwhelmed, surprise them with your mercy and your hope. Oh God, enable us to be the church that you have called us to be. For none of us are too young or too old, too small, too big, too anything, to be able to be your beacon of hope and love. God, enable us to abide in you and to extend branches of hope and of love. Oh God, as we worship you this morning, we do gather from many places. Those who are continuing to try to make school happen in very new and challenging ways. We ask that you, over, you overwhelm each and every one of them, those who are making school happen and those who are participating in school, Overwhelm them and surprise them with your peace this week. Be with those who are trying to do work differently. Be with those who are without work. And God, be with each of us. God, as we hear these scriptures this morning, we are faced with the reality that sometimes we let go of your vine. Enable us today to cling to you, to abide in you. And abiding you, may we find rest, May we find peace, may we find hope and joy that surpasses all those things around us. Oh God, it is in that confidence of abiding in you that we can bring to you those things on our hearts, the joys, the fears, and the angst, those whom we love and those whom we know are in need of your healing touch, and we name them before you this morning. Oh God, hear our prayers this morning. As we come to you lifting them up, we also come to you in gratitude for your love and care for each of them and each of us. Oh God, we become so busy and consumed with the stress and the deadlines that we need a reminder today of who we are, whose we are, and why we are here. Oh God, we give you thanks that you love us through all of it. God, give us your guidance and your care this week to do the work you have called us to do and be the people you have called us to be. Help us, O oh God, as we seek to do all of your will as your beloved children who confidently pray the prayer your Son taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, let's share the uh, True Vine Litany. When we feel isolated, we can remember that Jesus said, I am the true vine. Are you all not seeing that? I'm the true vine. Abide in me. When we feel powerless, we can find strength in remembering that Jesus said, I am the true vine. Abide in me. When we are tempted to try to go it alone, we can reach out to the other believers, remembering that Jesus said, I am the true vine. Abide in me. When life becomes so busy that time with God seems impossible to find, we can regain our focus by remembering that Jesus said, I am the true vine, abide in me. When we stress about the quality of the fruit we are or are not producing, we can relax and trust the source of our life and growth, the one who said, I am the true vine. Abide in me. Amen. The scripture reading uh, this morning comes from John 15, 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the NIV version. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in, in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear your fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. hear the scripture verse this morning, I wonder what you clung to this week. As the different reports came in about the hurricane going this way or that way, uh, as different other reports came in, I wonder what you clung to. I want you to think about this week, that this morning, as God calls us to abide in him. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you have gathered us in that we could abide in you if only in this little time and space. And we would feel and experience your renewal. Your renewal of hope, your renewal of joy. Oh God, we ask that you speak to us once more this morning. Enable us to hear your word for us, not only individually, but as a church, as your body of Christ. Oh God, now rescue me from me, hide me in your cross, and I'll be so careful to give you all the praise and glory in your son's holy name. Amen. There have been a lot of news stories this last week. Hurricanes, pandemics, social things across the country. I wonder if you heard about the story of a little three-year-old who was on the beach with her family in Greece. They were enjoying a wonderful day. She was on one of those big unicorn floats. 
and a wave came up and it carried her outside of her parents' reach. They tried and tried to get to her and they could not. The currents kept pulling the parents the other way. She ended up in water so deep that a fairy rescued her. Do you have the picture, Alex? See how far out she is? A three-year-old. And she clung to her unicorn float until they got the fairy just close enough to pull her in. She clung to that unicorn. I would think that in a crazy week like this, we would need more than a unicorn float to hang on to, to get through this week. The disciples wanted more than some kind of magical unicorn to hang on to in this scripture verse with Jesus. This scripture verse happens in that final week. They've had an incredible journey with Jesus. They've had this wonderful Last Supper, which was good and exciting and confusing all at the same time. And Jesus tries to prepare them that he's going to leave them. Throughout this whole journey, he said, you're going to do things greater than I. And then he says, and now I'm going to leave. And they say, what? How is that supposed to happen? How are we supposed to do this? Give us something. And then he goes and says this I am statement. I am the true vine. You are the branches. The grapevine was a very integral part of Israel's identity. It is one of the oldest farming uh, crops, one of their oldest agriculture practices. If you go back and look at the story of Noah, it's one of the very first things that they planted when they got off the boat. It is very integral to understanding who they are. So much is built into their um, architecture of the temple. You have that picture, Alex? So it's hard to see a little bit, but you'll see at the top, the gold clusters at the top of the column. Those are the grapes. Horizontal, you'll see a strip of gold above that. That is the grapevine. The disciples very well knew this image. Jesus could have been standing under those steps when he said it, or they had just been there the day before. And Jesus says, I am more than a symbol. I am the true vine. You are the branches. And together we produce that fruit. Notice who is what in, the, in this image. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. We're not the vine. It's not all up to us. But we're also not the fruit. We are the branches. We are the br branches that are able and empowered to produce fruit by the power that comes through that vine. It's interesting, if you are a wine connoisseur, you might know this, uh, but ancestry in, um, in those grapevines is really, really important because they know the quality of the produce comes from the vine. Over in France, they can trace some of those grapevines all the way back to the 12th century because they know the quality of that fruit comes from the vine. It comes through that branch that's been well taken care of, and it produces that rich and nutritious fruit. When we think about that image, that that connection produces that quality, I wonder what we're producing. How well is our connection to the vine, and how healthy is our fruit? I would think some days we might feel like we've been battered like the hurricane this week turned some of our plants caliwampus. I remember back in our previous parsonage, we had this huge wisteria bush out in our front yard, never blossomed, just a big green bush out there until Hurricane Ike. Just the weekend before, I took a lot of time pruning it. Probably the first thing I've ever really pruned in a home that we've lived in. It looked awesome until that hurricane. Knocked at Cali Wampus, it looked like an old Southern Belle dress that had been knocked sideways, showing the underskirt to the rest of the street. All the branches, not the beautiful bush. But after that storm, it has bloomed every time since. It was interesting to spend time doing that, but it knocked at all Cali Wampus. Some of the branches got broken. I wonder how we are faring in the storm. Do we feel like we're clinging to it? 
Are we being able to allow God's Holy Spirit to flow through us and produce the fruit he hopes to produce in and through us? Or are we struggling a little bit? It's interesting as we look through it, he says we can't just be the vine. We don't get to just say, okay, here I am, and sit there in the pew on Sunday mornings and say, okay, I've been there, done that. This is my job. This is all I'm going to do. Actually, he says there's work. There's pruning, there's cutting, and there's abiding. Pruning is cutting back the things that are sapping the energy from the branches. I, read, I watched an interview this last week where a couple in the Holy Land, if you ever go to the Sea of Galilee, they make some incredible wine through that whole area. It's the perfect area to, get, to grow those luscious grapes. And they talked about what they do to prune their grapes. Every year, not their grapes, their vines and their branches, every year they hire four people per acre. They have hundreds of acres, four people per acre to spend a month and a half pruning. Four people per acre, and they spend every day for a month and a half pruning. Intentionally cutting back the things that weigh down and that sap the energy from the vine. It's intentional that we do that pruning work. Maybe you have tried to go out and use your water hose. It doesn't matter if it's connected to the source, the water's turned on. If there's a kink in it, you're not getting much water. If someone drives over your water hose and then sits their vehicle on it, you're not getting any water. Likewise, as the branches, if we have weeds that are entangling it, if there is stuff that is sapping our energy and our passion and our joy, if there is dead weight that's weighing us down, we can't produce the fruit that God has called us to produce. I love the story of a preacher who moved into a town, learned that everyone in his church was growing tomatoes. He said, I'm going to try this. He gets out there, he started growing a good group of tomatoes, a good crop of tomatoes, invited George over to come check it out. George was a person in the church who knew all about tomatoes, who had the award-winning ones that everyone aspired to be. George got over there and looked at him and said, pretty good preacher, but you got to pinch the suckers. He said, do what? He said, you got to pinch the suckers. Those that are sucking all the life and the energy out of the vine that are keeping your tomatoes from being what they can be. Pinch the suckers. I wonder what is sucking our joy, our peace, and our hope in days like today. What are those things that we just need to let go of? The habits. Maybe it's always being on social media and listening and paying attention to the negative stuff. Maybe it's a habit that we just need to kind of kick the can. I wonder what we need to pinch off and prune off intentionally and say, you know what? This isn't life giving to me. This isn't life giving to my relationship with Christ. Likewise, there's the cutting of the branches. It's not that the branches take any energy away or take any life out of it because they're dead. They're not sucking up nutrients, but it takes energy to hold up those dead branches. Often when I look at this, I think those dead branches are the things that we don't talk about. It's that shame that we hold on to. It's that guilt, those grudges, those regrets that we hold on to. We might not even talk to our best friend about it. We might not talk to our spouse about it. But it's those things that clutter our heart and take up all the space that could be filled with God's joy, that could be filled with God's peace, that could be filled with God's hope and mercy in a crazy, chaotic world. We have to cut those things out. Not that it's sapping, sapping the lifeblood out, but it takes so much more energy to hold those things. I wonder what things need to be cut away. What grudges and lifelong things have we been holding on to that aren't giving life to our relationships, that aren't giving life to our joy and enjoying life, having peace even in the midst of the storm? Jesus says, that's just got to get cut away. You've got to cut that stuff away. 
Maybe in this pandemic, things you didn't expect to be cut and pruned, got cut and pruned, and you said, well, maybe I didn't miss that so much. Maybe I don't need to pick that back up. There are many things when we look at it, we have to intentionally do that work. It says, in, when I was watching that interview, they have to do that pruning every single year. It takes intentional work. It takes intentional work to step back and say, okay, God, where am I not connecting? Where is the vine kinked if we're not filling this connection? And I'm not experiencing your peace. I'm not experiencing your hope. And I'm not experiencing your joy. If you're not experiencing those things, even in the middle of a pandemic, even in the middle of a hurricane and all the other chaos, maybe there's some pruning and cutting that needs to be done. It's not easy work. I will tell you, this last week I went, well, I guess it was on Monday, um, I went to a doctor appointment and I said, you haven't been here in two years. I said, I've been here, I brought kids. And then I said, you brought your kids, but you haven't taken care of yourself. You haven't been here in the chair, the kids have. I went, oh. And it was realizing, sometimes we get so busy in life, we forget to take care of pruning and cutting and abiding in God. That last word, abiding, means we remain in Christ. We remain in him, and not as an old grump or an uninterested teenager, but we just say we abide in love. It's not just sitting there like, okay, God, I'm here. But it's seriously, intentionally abiding in God. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this, but if you hold your hands up and you're clinging to the vine and you're holding the branch... If you're abiding in Christ, you're watching the vine. You're watching what you're holding on to the entire time. We're not focused on the fruit. The world will tell us to focus on the fruit. Focus on what you're producing, that you are what you make. Your retirement portfolio, your grains, what team you make. The world will tell you it's all about this. But when you focus on the fruit here, your arm will start to droop. You begin to let go of the vine. But here's the thing. This is not what we are. What we are is the branch made in Christ. Christ is the one who makes, we, makes us who we are. We're not the fruit. We are not what we, are produ what we produce. We are the branch. God calls us to abide in him, to remain steadfast in him. Throughout this entire chapter of 15, John says, abide ten times to remain in Christ in love. What does that look like? When you go a little bit further in the next passage of scripture, you have that up there, Alex? As a father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. We're not merely servants. God doesn't go say, go out there and be a branch. In that next scripture, Jesus calls us his friend. You and me, he calls us his friend. He asks us to remain and abide in that relationship. And when we do so, he empowers us with his love. When we are empowered with his love, our fruit is the love in which we show one another and ourselves. It's not enough just to be a branch. We're called to produce fruit. So we show love in this world to those around us. If we're producing fruit, we're producing love. We're acting in the love that Christ has shown us. So we have a choice. We can cling to that vine and be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do what Christ has encouraged us and implored us to do and produce that fruit, or we don't. We disconnect from that vine. When we let go of that vine, that scripture says... We lose all life. What happens to those limbs? They're gathered up, casted away. We find in week after week when we are not holding on to that vine, 
That is when our hope and our peace and our joy is zapped. I encourage you in the days ahead to look at what are you clinging to? Are you clinging to the true vine? Or are we clinging to something else? And then where is our attention? Is our attention on what we are producing? And it's hard. Anybody that's been in school, that's been in a working world, knows it is hard to keep your eye on the vine and not on the fruit. Because everyone's asking, what have you accomplished? What have you produced? What have you created? What have your kids and your grandkids accomplished? Everything in the world tells us it's about this. But Jesus tells us this morning, that's not it. He calls us to be the branch and claim him, to cling to him in the calm waters and in the stormy waters. We might sometimes look like that three-year-old out on that unicorn, clinging on for dear life. Although there are a few pictures, she just enjoyed the ride. She knew that unicorn was going to get her where she needed to go, and she just enjoyed the ride. Sometimes that's how it is with Christ. When we simply hold on and abide in him, the storms around us don't faze us. Other times we have to clench a little harder and know that we are rooted in him. God call, or Jesus calls us to be the branch. So this week, let us not get caught up in an identity crisis. We're not the fruit we produce, and the whole world and solving all the problems is not up to us. That's God's job. Our job is to be the branch, to simply be open and available, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we may show God's love to all those around us. Even if we don't have the answers, we can be kind. Even if we don't agree, we can share love. Even if it's overwhelming, we can offer Christ hope. For he is the true vine, and we are the branches. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. As we go out this morning, let us go out knowing that we have been abiding in Christ. Let us go out into a week of unknown, clinging to the vine, that we may go out freely in the grace and the love and the hope of Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank uh-huh.